This is what a cargo ship does to protect itself from armed pirates trying to get on board. I know what you're thinking. What can water do against AK-47s? In reality, water cannons are actually pretty effective in preventing pirates from getting on board. But I agree with you. Water guns are quite underwhelming as a weapon, especially considering that if pirates somehow manage to get on board, it is game over for the ship's crew. Not that they would be killed, but they could be taken hostage for weeks or months, and in some cases, for many years. But what happened when Somali pirates attacked a US Navy cruiser and destroyer at the same time? Why many commercial ships don't simply carry real weapons to protect themselves against criminals? Why these extremely loud speakers can be deafening to pirates, even if they wear earplugs? How the simple attachment turns a hose into a weapon? And if all that fails, what the crew could do to get rid of armed pirates who've successfully boarded the ship is not what you think. There are two layers of defense that most commercial ships employ against pirate attacks. First is the discouragement layer, which is equivalent to installing a security camera outside your house. It doesn't physically stop anybody, but it will discourage some burglars from targeting your house. The second layer is the anti-boarding layer, which is similar to having a security gate at your house to make break-ins much more difficult. For commercial ships, the discouragement layer could start with placing dummies around the ship to give the impression of greater numbers of crew on watch. In addition, lasers could be used to mess with the pirates' visuals as they approach. The ship could also increase her speed, since boarding a fast-moving vessel is much more difficult and dangerous for pirates. But long-range acoustic devices, or LRADs, are probably one of the most effective tools for discouragement. As soon as the crew notices any suspicious boats approaching them, they could use LRATs to communicate with that boat. Unidentified small craft. You are now considered a threat to this vessel. And if that doesn't stop the pirates... LRATs could play a very loud tone, which could be as loud as standing behind a jet engine and directed toward the boat, which is very uncomfortable, if not deafening. Now you might think the pirates could simply wear earplugs, but according to one manufacturer, that wouldn't be very effective. That's because sounds can still travel to your inner ear through vibration of the bones in the skull, which is how bone conduction headphones work. In some cases, this might be enough discouragement for criminals, who might turn around and look for the next easier target instead. That said, pirates who are serious could shoot the rat and destroy it. And that's where the second layer of anti-boarding equipment comes into play. This is a simple yet effective weapon to stop boats. It shoots out a rope that stays on the water surface and then tangles up the engine propeller as the boat crosses over it. Now take that same principle, apply it to cargo ships, and you get this. A series of trailing wires that can be brought out on the sides and the stern of the ship. If a boat tries to get too close, there's a good chance that this would stop them and make them think twice. A quick stop like this could in fact be dangerous for the pirates. Water cannons are another effective tool to prevent unwanted onboarding. The cannon's water pressure can be used as a deterrent for pirates, just like they're used for riot control. But the cannons could also fill up an approaching boat and potentially sink it. Some cannons are remote operated so the crew can use them from a safe distance without having to worry about being fired at. Some other ones are fixed but shoot water in all different directions to hinder onboarding. And some others have rotating heads which consistently spray water on the sides of the ship. And then there is the water curtain. This specially designed sinker rate keeps the nozzle down near the water's surface, and the restrictive nozzle at the end ensures that the water coming out does so at high pressure. This makes the long hose lash about unpredictably and violently. It would definitely hurt to get hit by this thing, and if you have several of them down the side of the ship, it would make it quite difficult to climb on board. 
The good old barbed wire or razor wire can also be used to prevent pirates from climbing on board using a ladder. Rolls of razor wire could be brought on the deck and quickly set up whenever needed. An alternative approach is to use safety barriers. These barriers can be simply attached to the sides of the ship and keep pirates out by preventing them from latching their ladders on the perimeter of the ship. Even with a rope, they are difficult to climb over due to their shape and the gap that they create for the climber. All the anti-boarding measures that were mentioned were designed to protect cargo ships against pirates who approached them on small boats. Never was it imagined that intruders would board a cargo ship from the sky, as it happened on November 19, 2023, when a helicopter approached the Israeli-owned cargo ship Galaxy Leader on a Red Sea shipping route and dropped off a handful of armed Houthi rebels, and from the looks of it, also a professional videographer. The rebels surprised the 25 crew members and took him hostage. But is there anything that the crew of Galaxy Leader could have done to save their ship? In any hijacking scenario, once the attackers are on board, there's really only one thing that the crew could do to force the hijackers to leave. And I'm not talking about a gunfight. If everything else fails, the best thing to do is for the crew to issue a mayday to notify authorities then shut off the vessel and go into a safe room that cannot be penetrated by the pirates. Pirates typically don't have the capability to operate the vessel, and if they cannot take anyone hostage, they have no leverage. They'll be most likely forced to leave before the Navy or Coast Guard arrives. But with the Galaxy Leader, the element of surprise from the sky made this option impossible. The Galaxy Leader, which is a car carrier, had no cars on board at the time. But the Houthis who hijacked it didn't care. This is because the Houthis hijacking was politically motivated. And this is why as of January 2024, the Houthi rebels have anchored the ship in a bay off the coast of Yemen. And turned it into a bit of a tourist attraction, apparently worthy of a selfie. But when it comes to the good old pirates, their motivations and goals are completely different. Consider Somali pirates, for example. When they hijack a ship, their goal is to hold the ship and the crew hostage until a ransom is paid. A high-profile example of this was the 2008 hijacking of the Ukrainian cargo ship Fina by Somali pirates who held 20 people hostage on the ship for four months until they received $3.2 million in ransom, which was airdropped near the ship. The pirates left the ship the very next day, and the hostages made it out alive. In the Gulf of Guinea, there was a different type of attack going on. Those pirates would usually only go after the cargo that was on board, and hold the ship and the crew until the cargo was transferred in a ship-to-ship -ship operation. This could take up to 10 days, after which the vessel and the crew were usually set free. There are of course ways to reduce the chances of becoming a target for pirates. For example, in light of the repeated Yemen-based Houthi attacks, as of December 28, 2023, half of the container ship fleet that regularly transits the Red Sea and Suez Canal to go from Asia to Europe is avoiding this route. They instead go around the entire African continent, which adds as much as a week to their voyage, increasing shipping costs and adding delays. Those who choose to continue using the old route end up paying higher insurance premiums. But isn't it easier to just arm the crew with guns so they can protect themselves against attacks? In theory, yes, but there are legal and practical limitations. In international waters, merchant ships are governed by the state regulations of the flag that they're flying. If the flag state permits, they can carry weapons. But the problem begins when those ships start going from port to port and country to country, where possession of firearms is illegal. The legality issue aside, the ship's crew are there to operate the ship, not to fight against pirates. I don't mean to open a can of worms, but to me, it's a bit like asking teachers in America to carry firearms in case of a school shooting. I would think most teachers wouldn't want that responsibility. 
This is why some ships hire private security companies that can accompany them in private zones. And they're generally vetted by port state control, so that indeed the ship could enter sovereign waters with arms being on board. All that said, historically, whenever piracy has become a really big issue, that's when the big guns come out. I'm of course talking about the navies. For example, in the early 21st century, piracy in Somali waters became quite popular. And at its height in 2011, Somali pirates carried out 212 attacks. The World Bank estimated those attacks to cost the world economy $18 billion. Given the severity of the problem, the US and coalition vessels from Combined Task Force 150 began actively pursuing pirate vessels in an attempt to deter them. But on March 18, 2006, a number of Somali boats engaged with the US Navy destroyer USS Gonzalez and the cruiser USS Cape St. George. The pirates started shooting at the ships with RPGs and other firearms. In response, the American ships returned fire with small caliber guns. As part of this, a large pirate skiff was set on fire by a 50 caliber tracer round fired from USS Gonzales, which burned it to the waterline. Historically, a big role of navies around the world has been securing merchant routes and fighting piracy, which is why after repeated attacks by Houthi rebels on commercial ships in the Red Sea that crippled global shipping, as well as their attacks on US naval vessels, on January 11, 2024, the US and British forces carried out airstrikes on targets throughout Yemen as a response to the Houthi militia. On January 17, 2024, the United States announced the Houthis, also known as Ansar Allah, as a specially designated global terrorist group, which means no more water guns for the Houthi rebels. <laughs>